Welcome everyone. My name is Schneems. We're going to be talking about active record and having. So let's say we've got a products table and we want to find products that have more than five duplicate prices. So this would mean if we have a product that's a um, iPhone charger that costs $20 and we have a cup that costs $20 and a hat that costs $20 and a uh, you know, bookcase that costs $20. So there, there's, you know, we have more than five items that all cost $20. We want to know all of the, the items that have uh, duplicate prices as long as there are more than five of those duplicates. It's a little bit to wrap your head around and um, let's see how we can do it in some SQL. We can use group. We used group in the last video. Go check that out if you missed it. And having. Having is a great clause. Um, we can say we are grouping by price. We are grabbing all of our products and grouping by price. So if we've got five items that cost $5, then that means the total count of those would be five. So in our in our having clause, we can say having count, and then we, we put in the thing that we have just grouped by. So we group by price. That's going to be the number of prices. That's not counting. It's not adding up. It's not summing up the prices. It's just saying the number of prices. And then we are saying greater than five. So all together, it's product.group price having a count of price greater than five. And this is doing what we just described previously, where we are grabbing all of our products that have a similar price that there are five or more of. Um, so we can run that and get a count. So in, in the database I happen to have, there are 24 products in our, in our database that have a similar price uh, with more, you know, more than or uh, five. And just to show that out of um, 2,124, only 24 of them have meet that condition. So I like to think of having as a grouped where clause. So if we if we go back, we are so price is in our database. Price is a you know it's a, it's a it's a part of our database. It's stored in our data structure. But if you're if you're grouping price and then you're counting it that's not stored in our database. That's kind of like a virtual attribute. So if we group all of our products that have a similar price and then we count all of those, you know, that's not going to be stored directly in our product. If we wanted to do a where clause against that, then we could use having. So again, I think of having as a grouped where clause or just using it for virtual attributes. Um, I use having and group heavily in a metrics and analytics sections of uh, databases. Um, you know, for instance, if you had one, you know, the last example we had maybe didn't make so much sense, but let's say you've got a uh, site where we've got users and we've got courses. So a user can take, have many courses and there's some sort of a join table we could call it roles where a role could be either a, a student or a teacher so uh, users has many classes or sorry a user has many courses through roles well every single time a user takes a course we're going to create a new role so we might want to say all right a, a logical question might be how many users have taken more than three classes or how many users have taken more than five classes, that, that type of a thing. Um, and using group and having, we can get that data from our database. Uh, it's, uh, it's pretty easy once you get used to it. But un until then, I know it can be a little, a uh, little challenging, and intimidating. So next off, we are going to show off a little bit about how active record does, um, some of its, uh, some of its magic. So stay tuned.